accuses the police of killing eight of its members during a protest in Abuja, but the Nigerian police deny doing that. Lagos plans big for power generation. The Commissioner for Energy will be in the studio this morning to tell us all about the plans. And a foundation moves to get more girls in science and technology using boot camps. Glad to have you join us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa this very beautiful Wednesday morning. Thanks for joining us. I am Osao Gui of Mora. And I am Annette Felix. Thank you very much for staying tuned to us on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A very beautiful day today in the city of Lagos. Uh, but across the country, uh, the top trending stories really um, don't give us a cause to be happy. Good morning to you, Osao Gui. Good morning. Our first top trending story, um, the headline says six dead, others injured as uh, security forces open fire on Shiites in Abuja. Um, we know about the Shiites and their protests, usually their match, that they usually come out um, once in a while to protest the release of their leader, El Zaki. Um, despite a court order for him to be released, he's still being held. But this time around, they didn't say the protest or match was for the release of their leader. They say it's an annual symbolic trek that they were observing in the city of Abuja when um, police officers fired, opened fire on them. and. Uh, the days leading up to this particular annual match, security had been beefed up you know, around um, the federal capital territory because of anticipation of violence or disruption or whatever that might occur. So I really don't know where they got this wrong for the police officers to eventually open fire leading to the loss of six lives. I mean, this, this occurred near Guarimpa gates in the capital. You know, they were singing songs, they were marching on, along the road, and w this, this just happened. So. People who spoke with Sarah reporters said, you know, the police just started shooting us. Um, they shot six people dead and they carried some dead bodies away. And trust Nigerians to always string this together to say, um, during the NTAS protest, allegations of soldiers carrying bodies away um, during the raid on Ibuhu's house, allegations as well of law enforcement agencies carrying bodies away. And here now, we have no evidence to prove this, but that's what we have on record. An eyewitness telling Sahara reporters that six people were shot dead and the bodies of others were carried away. We really have no idea why that happened and why these raids in fact happened because, I mean, the last time I checked the Constitution, we have freedom to, to assemble, you know. And, but we see this year in, year out, week in, week out, month in, month out. So let's, uh, let's really see uh, a clearer picture of what happened at Abuja. We are finished. People were dispersing while the police and soldiers arrived. They started shooting tear gas. Then later on, they used live ammunition on us, majorly female and children, because most of the men have even left because they have already conducted the... The, the, the prayer for us to disperse. So this is what happens today. They just attack on armed innocent female and children. They have killed ar ar about eight people now. So many people have run into the bush so many, with so, 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 so many guns, gunshot injuries. All right. Um, you know, just a short clip from um, the events yesterday or the well, incidents yesterday in Abuja. Um, you know, I was saying to myself yesterday that I personally don't think I am, you know, mentally or even emotionally uh, ready to discuss, you know, this particular story and, you know, just really discuss how Nigeria breaks, you know, a person down and how Nigeria hurts. Uh, because, you know, that's really how I can interpret this. Nigeria just really hurts. And, you know, it's, you know, more reasons why you've seen thousands of people jetting out of the country to wherever it is that it takes them. It doesn't matter if they're going to Antarctica as long as they leave the country because the country currently really, 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 really hurts. Um, the reports of lives being lost, you know, to the reports of bodies being taken away to, you know, the fact that, you know, this was not in even any way violent. It wasn't a protest or any way. It's a walk. Um, and the fact that, you know, I think it was someone who mentioned it yesterday that the injustice that has been done to Ibrahim El Zaki under no circumstance in the whole wide world, you know, will anyone look at that and just throw, you know, and ignore them. It is the worst type of injustice that, ha that has been done to that particular person. 
Um, and the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people just continue to look away. Yes, there's demands from Amnesty International, Serap, and the rest. Um, but you know, it doesn't you know it has of of course you know not had any effect. Um, and of course, you we cannot see these things continue to happen because this is not the first time um, that we're seeing this. There's a more gruesome video that I actually saw, and I shared it you know with the group um, of um, you know soldiers yesterday and what they were doing to these uh, same shites. Um, and it makes you just start to, I, I mean, it's, it's a good point to, you know, just mention that when insurrections arise, you know, nobody should act shocked or act surprised, you know, and say, oh, where are these people coming from? Because this is not the first time that these shots have been killed in broad daylight um, multiple times. In fact, it almost is on record that every time that the shots have a walk or a protest, there is, you know, a loss of lives, you know, it might be two, five, six, ten, you know, but every single time, that there is a walk or a protest, there is, and, and, and to be honest, and I think everyone should be honest with this, that there has never been any time that has been on record that the Shiites went on a protest and were violent or they destroyed anybody or they, you know, caused any, you know, a harm to anyone. Um, it has always continued to be a repeat of the same thing where the police and the Nigerian army attacks them um, while they do their protest. There's a, there's a video, I think I was still on radio back then, um, where there were, you know, live videos of the army really just shooting live rounds at, um, at, at the Shiites. Blank. I mean, there was, there was no provocation. They were really just walking. I, just, I think the video clips are still on YouTube, where Nigerian army soldiers really just got on one knee and started firing into a crowd of, of, uh, of um, Shiites. So it's not the first time. It's happened many, 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 many times. And that is um, the Nigeria of today. And that is a Nigeria that the Nigerian army has no respect, no, no, no respect for the uh, value of the Nigerian life. These are the people who are uh, meant to protect Nigeria's integrity and Nigeria's territory, um, ter 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 territory um, and of course stand for a Nigerian, but they are the ones instead that would kill without any fear or, you know, worry. Um, and so, you know, I, I, man, to be honest, I'm just not there, you know, in a place where um, these things are easy to speak about because we're, we, we're speaking about this today. Pretty much the same thing we did months ago, and we will be, you know, talking about it in another couple of weeks or months when it happens again. And I hate to be a part of a space that really just has these conversations and goes home to sleep and continue my life because it really, really hurts to see what Nigeria is today. And there's, there's no, there's no ignoring these things because mm -hmm. if it doesn't affect you directly, it will affect you indirectly. Somehow, some way, you will be affected by what Nigeria is today in 2021. And I made that statement when the policeman was killed in Ajao Estate, that Nigeria can happen to you at any time, regardless of what you know, space uh, you are, regardless of who you are, Nigeria can happen to you at any time. Um, there are reports of unverified for now, but I'm sure we'll make the news today of um, someone who was killed in the southeast. I don't want to call the name because it's still non-verified, but it's the husband of a very, very popular Nigerian who's also late. Um, who was reportedly also killed by unknown gunmen in Southeast yesterday. Um, when those you know, reports are verified, we'll talk about it. But, well, good morning, Nigeria. Mm. Six people dead in Abuja. And um, when we just go further down into the northern part of the country, Borno State, we hear stories of 20 more people who are mostly fishermen, also victims of Nigeria. Um, what the news is saying is that an Air Force fighter jet fired, you know, into this crowd, this community in Borno State, and they basically killed these 20 people. And like they would say, it's a glitch. We heard stories like this about two weeks ago or so, where in Borno State, a, a, you know, an Air Force fighter jet also opened fire on a civilian community in Yobe killing some people. We saw the pictures on the front page of Daily Trust newspaper, children, badly injured, women, and, and men as well. And um, of course, they denied this at first, or they will keep quiet, but then later, they will come up to say, oh, this happened, we would investigate. Take us back to 2017. Same thing happened in Ran. Still, in this same bonus state we're talking about now in 2021. In 2017, an Air Force pilot dropped a bomb on a village in Ran killing dozens of civilians. The military apologized, promised a thorough investigation, but they never made their findings public. So we never really knew what happened 
in Bono State 2017. What happened in Yobe a few weeks ago, where at least 12 people were killed and many others were wounded. You know, and, and just now we're getting news of this event that happened uh, reportedly on Sunday. You know, just a few days ago, um, 20 people said to be killed on Sunday in Kwatsa Daban Masara community in Bornu State. How long more would we continue to hear stories about a technical glitch by um, the people who are supposed to be protecting us, then firing bombs on us? I really so can't no. rationalize how this happens. What sort of a mistake if, if, is it that they didn't get training? That's why people keep saying things like this has to be a deliberate attack by the army because we really want to question how um, people of such caliber, I mean, for you to get on a, on a fighter jet, you must have been thoroughly trained. You must know your onion. So how do you get on that plane with all the... Um, training necessary and then well, things like fair, that happen um i don't know if to call it a glitch i don't know if a glitch is the right word to use um, um and you know th i think these things you know maybe happen when there is a mistake with the coordinates uh, that are sent you know um there's always reconnaissance there's people who are on ground i believe there's meant to be um uh, people who point out so coordinates who's sending where, the wrong coordinates where, well, because so that, that's, it's a mistake too many you know that's you know what you know would be the you know likely explanation uh, for things like this. And also, to be fair, um, if about a month ago or so, or less than a month ago, the United States also had, you know, pretty much the same thing where they had fired, um, you know, from a drone, an unmanned aircraft basically had fired what they thought was an ISIS um, um, uh, uh, camp or an ISIS, you know, member. Um, and so in their bid to, you know, you know, diffuse that threat, killed, you know, a man and, his, and seven of his kids who, you know, just had, he had driven back from work, they had come to welcome him and, you know, the, you know, the bomb exploded or the, you know, um, jet fired, unmanned aircraft fired and, you know, he was dead. Um, they had also initially denied it, you know, and said that it was actually an ISIS threat um, until the investigations on ground by the Washington Post and, um, you know, a few others. Do you really want to compare to, that you know, U.S. situation no, 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 no. to what happens in Nigeria, Hold really? Hold on. Um, and, um... They did investigations on ground, and then the U.S. Um, Army then owned up and said, "Oh yes, it was a mistake." And you know, they put out press statements. Of course, uh, they're speaking about compensations for uh, the, his family, his wife, and you know, other family members who you know didn't get affected. Um, but that's in the United States. Um, in Nigeria, it happened in Rand, like you mentioned in 2017. It happened two weeks ago. It happened again, you know, on Sunday. Um, and that's where the difference is. Um, these things don't happen every four market days you know in a country that actually knows what it's doing um and so once again nigeria can happen to you at any time and it's it's embarrassing you know and uh, how and that's uh, do we come here every morning and we're talking about 20 people dead 48 people were killed in kaduna on monday or sunday or monday 12 were killed two weeks ago in the same you know nigerian air force misfiring and now we're talking about another 20. if you remember not long ago there was also a story of a helicopter firing into a boat somewhere in the niger delta mm. that also led to the loss of lives you know that till date has not been investigated there's still no explanation as to what happened there this really is just an, a very very clear picture of what the value of the nigerian life is to the Nigerian people and to the Nigerian government. And that's exactly what it is. Because of the speed with which we move on from these things and have accepted that we can wake up in the morning and hear 100 people died and we just move on like it's nothing. It sounds like, you know, some Akara woman's uh, oil, you know, went bad. That's how, how easy it is for Nigerians to move away from stories like this. And, you know, and nothing will happen. The same way the Nigerian government itself has continued to you know, and people would say murder its own citizens and really just move on like nothing happened. There's no investigations, there's no sanctions, there's no nothing, no checks and balances to be done to find out what happened and, you know, where it went wrong. You would realize that in the coming days, there would be no proper statement from the Nigerian Air Force to say, this is where we got it wrong, this is what happened, and this is, you know, what we're doing to ensure it never happens again. Nothing. You know, we move on until we sit here again a couple of weeks from now and report a similar story. So... Nigeria just really breaks your heart. Mm. And I would say um, our condolences go to those families who have been who were affected um, in the Air Force misfire. Okay, so um, we have another story moving away from security to politics, right? Yeah, so this um, is just a short uh, video clip that we'll be sharing with you, maybe on a lighter note. Uh, and this is from River State, where 
there was, of course, um, a meeting. The um, chairman of the NDDC, um, Godfrey Lakpabio, was in River State for, I'm not sure exactly what the program was. But while they were there, um, the governor of River State, Yasom Wiki, had a few things to say. So let's play it for you, and uh, we'll be back. There's no collaboration we have had with the NDC that they have completed one. The Mother and Child Hospital, we are supposed to have collaborated with NDC. We brought our own part of the money. NDC didn't bring it down. Okay, refund us our money that you are, you are holding. It was a war. Thank God they know if they didn't pay what the problem would look like. <laughs> and they paid by that money. Now, the headquarters, where they are now, Mr. Minister, you are here, you and the MD. You told me in government house that you partner with the state government that you are going to bring 2.5 billion. The state government will bring 2.5 billion for the dualization of the papers. As I speak, you have not bought one. Meanwhile, the road is only 95 percent red. If you don't pay, I will make sure you will use that road to your headquarters. Because yes, because I'm not a for a Christmas. Yes. Yes, because you see, I got the fact that you have built this one for police. IG will not send police to support you that day because I'm going to be the one that will need to block that road. Because it was fulfilled what you have promised. Hmm. The River State Governor Houston Wiki has distinguished himself as the vocal governor, almost like I want Donald Trump in the sense that he would always bear his mind on issues. And regarding the NDDC, we know that he's always been he's been calling them out. Whatever they do wrong, whatever he feels, this is not you know just doesn't go by the book. He calls them out, for, calls them out for it. And I don't know, pe people love him for it. Don't they? Yeah, it's, and it's it's funny you know actually to see. And maybe it's a good thing that we ended with that one because you know I, I watched that yet, watched it yesterday and I did have a good laugh. Um, at his, you know, the way he always expresses himself. Like you said, you know, he never holds his tongue um, on anything. Um, and so it's one of the things he's been known for, and it's always very, very interesting to see. Um, I like the part where he said, you know, it's a good thing that they refunded because, you know, they know the, you know what the problem will look like. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. Um, so it's, it's, it's funny, you know, and it's interesting. And it also shows also that he knows exactly every, every little tiny detail of what goes on in the state. He knows about contracts. He knows agreements. He's, you know, on ground, you know, hands on. Um, he's not leaving some of these responsibilities for commission, commissioners or House of Assembly members or anything. He gets involved with every single detail, security, infrastructure, education, all of it. There's also a clip uh, that we didn't get to play uh, where he was, you know, in a, in a gathering accusing the GOC in River State there of being involved in uh, oil bunkering. He said it to his face that he, he knows that he's, um, you know, involved in criminal activities of oil, oil bunkering and he's a security threat to the state. And, you know, he's uh, maybe, maybe doing that so that he can raise enough money to become um, um, chief of army staff at some point. You know, he, he said it to his face. There's also a video clip that emerged about a year ago where he was accusing a traditional ruler in uh, River State there of being one of the troublemakers in the state. It was it's also always very, very funny, but um, it, it, he, it shows that really he doesn't hold back mm. his thoughts his views on anything, you know, and if regardless of who you are, how high and mighty you are, he will tell you exactly what. Do you think thinks. other politicians should emulate that? Because lots of people would rather be politically correct and want to be more diplomatic, more tactful regarding these things. But VK would say, no, you're airing here, and I'll call you out for it. In yeah, I think I think it's something that should be emulated. So, so what what's most important is to be aware first, hmm. because a lot of people may not do it because they don't even know. Yeah. You know, so so what I am seeing here, and the same thing with uh, Governor Yahya Bilo, um, there's also a clip where he was, uh, he went to see a hospital um, um, refurbishment and realized that it was below par. And he called out the contractor who was right there, I think it was a Chinese contractor, and told him that this, the work is written is zero. So for me, what's most important is, you know, the awareness of what exactly is going on in your state mm -hmm. at every single level, in every community. That's what you, you, know, you as governor should be. Yes, you appoint people to handle, you know, MDAs here and there, but doesn't mean that you should take your hands off 
Um, you should know when there are street lights bad in every single corner. You should know when there's a block drainage. You should know when there's security threats. You should know every single team, um, whoever it is, let your security reports actually come to you and be things that you can verify. So if he's accusing the GOC of being involved in oil bombing, he has been properly briefed and he knows exactly what he's saying. If he's accusing the traditional ruler of being a tout and you know being involved in insecurity challenges in that region, he knows what he's saying. He's not just saying these things um, for humor. And if he's accusing the NDDC of failing to be to you know, play their own part, you know, when they had agreements on funding for certain projects, he knows exactly what he's saying. And that's for me is the most important part. Not many governors would have his humor or have his manner of expressing you know himself, which a lot of people find interesting and funny. Um, but most importantly, say what you, you want to say, and most importantly, rather, um, be aware of what exactly is going on in your state. Mm. And that's really And I think that his personality, is. that charisma, really makes the bitter pill of his criticism easier to swallow because yeah. he says it with a hint of, you know, maybe um, humor that is not even deliberate. It's just him. It's just who he is. Okay. And it makes people laugh. But the point is, he's driving home a message that somebody's failing to deliver on their job. Absolutely. And definitely, you should listen and take that seriously and sit up. Yes, absolutely. So, yes, kudos to him. I mean, that's the general view of Nigerians. They say, yes, well done. You are politically aware and you're not afraid to say what you think. So, yes, that's where we draw the curtains on Top Trending this morning. Let's take a break and see what's trending across the papers on Off The Press.